final speaker of the day, my fellow Dutchman, Dutch person, Dutch woman, uh, Freke van der Voort. She's going to be talking about the multiphase nature of the CGM in very fine cosmological simulations. So, Freke, the floor is yours. Uh, so yes, thank you. Um, I, so I'm happy to give this talk today about refined cosmological simulations and specifically about the circumgalactic medium. I was also asked to uh, review the other work done in this area and uh, um, well, there's a lot of it, so I won't be able to uh, talk about everything, but I'll do my very best. Uh, but in case I miss your fantastic result, or I mention it, but, uh, but don't do it justice, then you please chime in uh, during the discussion. Uh, so, let's see. Uh, firstly, cosmological simulations, we haven't heard about them uh, very much these two days. So let me just say that, um, so we, we start from fluctuations from the cosmic microwave background, then under the influence of gravity, this collapses, forms the, the, the structure that we know as the cosmic web, and in the nodes of the cosmic web, that's where the galaxies form. Uh, these types of simulations cover a huge dynamic range, uh, low density voids in between filaments, as well as, as the, the galaxies themselves. Uh, and in order to, um, to, to do that, uh, we... Uh, we usually keep the, the, the mass resolution of each of our computational elements the same. Uh, one way to do better than doing like full 100 megaparsec cubed uh, volumes with relatively uh, poor resolution is to do zoom in simulations. So you, you first run your, your full volume, then you pick a halo that you're particularly interested in, and then you re-simulate only that one at very high resolution. Of course, at the expense of then only having uh, one galaxy and its satellites and no longer having the statistics. Um, this is now what the CGM uh, looks like in one of my simulations. So the top panel show you the density and the bottom panel show you the temperature. Uh, just, just to give you a visual impression of what we're talking about, these are uh, thin projections, like 20 kiloparsec or so. Um, so you can see that there is this, this hot, diffuse gas, uh, as well as, uh, as denser, colder gas. Um, I'll try to call it cool, not cold, not to uh, offend people who like molecular gas. Um, so, and here you can see why we call it multi-phase. We have two peaks, one at a low density and a high temperature, and the other one uh, at a still a low, temp low density, but a somewhat higher and lower temperature. Uh, and because the, um, so I'm going to mostly talk about Milky Way sized halos. So it's about 10 to the 12 solar masses. And for these, it's very hard to see the hot gas because it just isn't very bright in X-ray. So um, that's why there's a lot of observations of this type of uh, galaxy halo system uh, at lower temperatures. Uh, and also that's uh, the part that's hard to resolve in our simulations. And that's why uh, I'll be talking about this uh, mostly. So um, I already said, so we keep usually when we do these simulations, we keep the mass resolution fixed, which means that all of as your galaxy is the densest part of your simulation, that's where all the resolution elements pile up. That's where you have resolutions that are better than a few hundred parsec. Uh, and as you go out uh, into this, uh, the halo, the circumgalactic medium, the resolution gets worse as the density uh, gets lower. Uh, and this is what it looks like for a standard uh, simulation from the Auriga project. Um, and, it, you know, it, it sort of at 50 kiloparsec, you, you have a few kiloparsecs, still cell sizes, and it goes all the way up to 8 kiloparsec in, uh, in the outer uh, CGM. Um, one way to do better is to... Um, to run this simulation again, but at eight times the mass resolution. That is, I guess, the sort of standard way to do it. Uh, the problem is that you're spending a lot of the extra computational time calculating this very high density regime, the, the, the interstellar medium that, you know, we have uh, not great models for. Uh, uh, and not in the area that you may be interested in, the, the CGM. I mean, so it still spends time calculating that, but basically all of the CPUs are waiting for the galaxy to finish. So usually this costs about 20 times more uh, CPU time than, uh, than running the lower resolution simulation. And instead, what you can do is keep the same mass refinement 
but uh, add an additional criterion. So for example, you can say that I, I won't let any of my, um, my cells get larger than one kiloparsec cubed. And in this case, the galaxy is treated in the same way. This has the additional advantage that your uh, not so great star formation model isn't affected by this at all. Like it will behave in exactly the same way because the resolution in uh, the ISM is exactly the same. And it has the added benefit that the regime where, uh, where in this case I'm interested in uh, is resolved much better. So uh, I mean, factors of three are easy and in the outer CGM we get a factor of eight better uh, spatial resolution. That's almost three orders of magnitude in mass resolution. Um, there's, and this, by the way, is a lot cheaper than a factor of 20. This cost is uh, um, about a factor of eight uh, more computational time to get this extra resolution. So there's also other ways you could, uh, you could put your extra resolution in the regime you're interested in. So for example, you could, um, you could uh, refine on, on density gradients or on, on where you, if you have a shock finder on shocks, you can refine on jets. If you have like a jet AGM feedback on the, on the cooling rate of the gas and all of these things have been done and are, are great ways, but uh, today I'll mostly talk about uh, uniform spatial refinement in the CGM. And I think the first time this has been done was by Francesco Miniati in 2014, specifically for the intra-cluster medium. So this is a, a large cluster with a standard AMR resolution here in the top panel and the bottom panel uh, additional uniform uh, refinement, which in this case is 10 kiloparsec, which is, which is very good before a massive cluster. Uh, and overall, um, you will see this also later in my own simulations, but overall the structure is very similar. You get the same filaments and the same, uh, you know, if you look at it uh, fuzzy without your glasses, it will look the same. But if you look carefully, then, uh, for example, here in the outer part with this green stuff is, uh, has a lot more structure. And what this paper shows, uh, amongst other results, is that at, at small scales, the um, the there's a lot more kinetic energy, a lot more turbulent power on small scales if you have this additional resolution. And I'll come back to, um, to turbulence later on in the talk. Uh, so back to my own simulations. This is a slice through one of, uh, one of my galaxies with the normal uh, standard mass refinement. Uh, and what I hope you can see is that as you go out in radius, you get these large blobs, which are uh, individual resolution cells. So we have, we're using the moving mesh code Arepo, which is why they all look like funky hexagonal shapes. Uh, and if you now, in, you know, spend your uh, additional uh, eight times more uh, computational time to have this extra resolution of one kiloparsec, this is what it looks like. So now you can see if I go back and forth a bit uh, that all this, um, this, all these blobs disappear and what you get instead are, are much smaller structures, again down to the resolution limit as has been uh, discussed before. Uh, you get a lot more of these cold clumps and also uh, the hot gas, the, this red stuff, um, these under densities are much more well defined. And you see for example, the type of uh, smaller scale turbulence that you just cannot resolve when you, um, well, when you have cells that are almost 10 kiloparsec size. Um, so then, uh, does it do anything for the central galaxy? And um, I'm not 100% certain what the answer is. So, so I would say overall, probably it doesn't change the galaxy very much. The stellar mass is, is pretty similar between all of these four runs going from um, only mass refinement all the way up to 500 parsec uh, CGM resolution. The, they're all disk dominated, uh, but with a substantial bulge. Uh, but there is some uh, hint that there's more star formation at late times uh, at the highest resolution, um, and that's why this galaxy looks a bit bluer. Um, but this obviously, well, with one simulation that's an outlier, we, we won't be able to say if that's a trend or not. So that's for uh, something we'll leave for, for future work. Uh, but we'll go back to the CGM now. So here are the um, is the, new, the total hydrogen column uh, in three of these simulations. And overall, again, the structure looks, uh, looks very similar on large scales. But if you look very carefully, you can see that there is just more fine grained structure 
as you go to higher resolution. Um, but if we now look not at all of the gas, which is what we can't observe because, um, well, because we can't see most, because most of the gas is hot and we cannot see it. Instead, we look at the, only the neutral gas. So this is the neutral hydrogen column density. You can see that compared to the lower resolution simulation, this, this higher one has a lot more, um, a lot more of this, um, these sort of high neutral hydrogen columns. Uh, and it's the only difference is again, the, the, C, the ISM is exactly the same. So the, the, the feedback driven by this galaxy is, is the same, at least statistically the same. Uh, so all of this is just due to uh, the additional resolution. Now, uh, I've also quantified this. So here is this uh, neutral hydrogen profile as a function of, of radius away from central galaxy. This is compared to some data points um, that are uh, that span a, a wide range of galaxies, and I am only showing you the halo of one particular galaxy. So it's not really about the normalization of this particular line uh, that I want you to focus on. I want you to focus on the difference is that um, we can increase, or in this case, the, the, the at sort of between 50 and 100 kiloparsec, the the average, the median H1 absorption is about an order of magnitude higher. Uh, going to 500 parsec uh, increases this even further. So now we have two orders of magnitude higher uh, high neutral hydrogen columns in this sort of inner CDM uh, than we would have just with our base resolution. And I, um, and some works have also previously claimed that there, that simulation struggled to have enough cool gas in the CGM. And I think uh, this may have just been a resolution issue because now we definitely have enough of this uh, neutral, uh, neutral gas in the, in the CGM. Um, there's also been uh, other works doing similar uh, simulations with uniform spatial refinements. Uh, these are uh, with, with AMR codes, so, so, so different from moving mesh code that, um, that I was using, uh, but they find the same qualitative results. So if you go from uh, standard resolution to refined, you increase the, the neutral column density as a function of uh, radius, and this increases the covering fraction of these systems. So this is uh, Redshift 1 by Hummels et al., and here is Redshift 2 by Peoples et al. Um, but what you can probably also see is that this is not two orders of magnitude, which is what I was claiming. Uh, so it's still quantitatively very different. Um, this may be because of di different numerical code. It may be because the halo mass or the redshift are different that they used. Uh, but it may also be just the feedback model that is, you know, this subgrid ISM, um, you know, feedback injection model where that, that is just uh, not really well. They have that vary a lot between different codes because uh, because this was really hard to do a, a really good good job there. So we all just uh, struggle as it is. So it could also be all of these, by the way. But it's definitely relate. Oh, sorry, the, the neutral hydrogen column density definitely depends on feedback. It's shown here by Suresh et al., which just shows that the covering fraction between a simulation without any feedback and with feedback uh, increases by a factor of two. Other, so you don't need to do like specially CGM refined simulations. You can also just increase your mass resolution, of course, with the, um, the additional computational costs. Uh, people have done this. This is all high redshift, but um, I'm fairly certain that they would find the same thing at lower redshift, which is so. Andre has done this near, and uh, also work from Ali Ramati from Eagle. And every time when you increase the resolution, you actually end up with more cool gas uh, as a function of um, of radius or here as a covering fraction. Uh, so. So qualitatively, this is all in agreement with each other. And why is this now? So uh, here I'm, I'm drawing completely on other people's work. So I, I think that there's quite some evidence that this might be due to the density fluctuations, whether or not you're uh, resolving them. So here's work from Cameron showing that if you have a cloud that you're only resolving with one in one resolution element, you'll have no, you'll have the same temperature and density here. And after 200 mega years, it'll basically have the same temperature and density as it did before. 
Whereas if you have lots of resolution elements in the same cloud, you can resolve the scatter in temperature and density. And some of these uh, resolution elements will be able to cool down. Uh, so even though you'll still have some left at higher temperature, you will also get this cool phase, uh, which may also well be happening in our um, cosmological, less idealized simulations. Uh, and then very recently, Clark and Mary and it all showed that if you um, if you trace the gas as a function of time, center it here at zero uh, at the, the snapshot where the gas for the first time reaches a low entropy, you can see that. So density increases, the temperature decreases, and the pressure sort of wiggles. But if you look at the gradients, you can see that the, the steepest gradient is in the density is before the steepest gradients in the temperature and the pressure, which means that it's the density that first changes before you end up with uh, with this low entropy gas. Uh, so I think it's quite convincing that it might just be the density fluctuations that we're that that clear resolution simulations can resolve that actually cause all of these effects. Um, so as promised, I wanted to come back to turbulence briefly. This is work by uh, Bennett Tsiyachki. Uh, also very recently that show that if they, so they enhance based on, on shocks, they increase the mass resolution there. And here is, the, yeah, here is the turbulent, um, turbulent velocities providing some non-thermal pressure support to the halo. This is at the virial radius and at redshift six, I must say, uh, going from, from light being the normal resolution simulation to the, these dark burnt orange, um, distribution, and you can see that it becomes much broader uh, when you have this resolution. So it adds pressure support, and that's quantified here. The non-thermal pressure is um, density times the turbulent velocity squared, and the total is that plus the, um, uh, the thermal pressure. And it's doubled here in the in the CGM. Um, so it, it, it becomes quite it becomes a lot more important than uh, than if you didn't have this additional resolution. And that brings me to another thing that could uh, add uh, non-thermal pressure support, which is magnetic fields. And these are uh, simulations I, I did uh, last year. Uh, they don't have AGM feedback in this case, but it doesn't super matter. These are slices through the simulations, um, density, temperature, and pressure. And the top panels all have no magnetic fields, so they're purely hydrodynamic. And the ones in the bottom panels are with magnetic fields. And what I, uh, you can see is that the small scale structure is quite different. So here you have just sort of random uh, small scale fluctuations, whereas with magnetic fields, you get this more coherent structure. Um, you also end up with more dense, low temperature gas near the galaxy itself. So in the very center at the disk, uh, disk halo interface, and you um, smooth well, so firstly, you increase the pressure because now you have magnetic pressure as well. Um, and it also smooths out like some of these uh, fluctuations that you see when you only have uh, thermal pressure. So what does the magnetic field strength look like? It looks like this. So it's an edge on galaxy. Again, this is the slice, not a projection. Uh, and the magnetic field is pushed out, is, is wound up in the ISM and then pushed out by outflows into the CGM. So it's high in the outflow direction and um, medium in the, uh, the, the, the disk plane, basically. Uh, and if you want to know what the ratio is between the thermal pressure and the magnetic pressure, so there, uh, it's quite a range. In the outflow direction, the, the magnetic pressure can dominate by two orders of magnitude, uh, but in most of the volume, it is subdominant uh, and the thermal pressure dominates. But even though the thermal pressure dominates in, in these um, re regimes away from the outflow direction, you still get all of this difference. You know, the, the, the much smoother structure is still there. So even though it doesn't dominate, it can still affect the properties of the, um, of the CGM. And I want to contrast this quickly with uh, some of the fire simulations. So some of them have also been run with MHD. Uh, and whereas we have uh, um, like a thermal, sorry, uh, thermal pressure over magnetic pressure on average of about 20, uh, their value is more like 500. Uh, so this is quite different. Uh, and, and I don't think we know yet why. Uh, it could be all sorts of things, feedback, uh, ISM physics, or, or the numerics of how it's implemented. 
Uh, but I just wanted to caution you that there is definitely some discrepancy between uh, between different works. Um, now that the results for the what we now find for our CGM uh, properties. So firstly, I want to show you what the cumulative mass profile looks like. So this is just all the masks included within um, all the sorry all the gas mass included within this particular radius, and you can see that. Uh, that is quite so solid is with magnetic fields and dashed is without and in the inner CGM these are different by a factor of two. So if you don't have magnetic fields your um, the outflows are much more efficient at pushing gas out of the halo and into the intergalactic medium uh, and this difference becomes smaller and smaller as you go to larger uh, radii and approximately disappears at about one megaparsec. Um, so this, uh, so my galaxy is only one galaxy, so is this, um, you know, is this robust? I just wanted to show this work by Pilipich et al. with T and G that have here in black the Friedusha model that has magnetic fields and in blue without magnetic fields. And for Milky Way mass, halo masses and below, they also have a higher gas fraction when magnetic fields are included. Um, so it is at least uh, consistent with this more statistical sample of galaxies. Then, then why is this? Well, so we can look at the differential properties. Uh, here is the outflow velocity in the top panel and the inflow velocity uh, below. Um, and you can see that without magnetic fields, these dashed lines, the radial velocity is a lot larger. So we have much stronger inflows and much stronger outflows in the absence of magnetic fields. Um, this Trans, well, partially translates to also having quite different um, metallicities, which is, of course, driven by outflows, because otherwise they would just stay in the ISM. Uh, so we get a much steeper profile when we have magnetic fields included. And at large radii, the difference between the average metallicity uh, can be an order of magnitude, uh, whether or not we're including this. But of course, properties aren't. Uh, necessarily the same, uh, spherically average. So I just wanted to, I think this is my last slide, um, to show you that it, it's indeed not homogeneous. It's not the same like when you just draw a circle here. Uh, so without magnetic fields on the left and with magnetic fields on the right, you can see that it looks quite different. You still have the highest um, metallicity in the outflow direction away from the plane. Uh, but in, in the case that we don't have magnetic fields, it, it mixes much more um, efficiently throughout the CGM, whereas it stays much more confined to this outflow direction when we do have magnetic fields. And um, I must say that, that I, like, I'm not 100% convinced why this is. So they, they, they could also, so they, I could, so there's definitely two possibilities, maybe more. So, so one is that, uh, that so the magnetic field is quite strong near the disk. So you may end up collimating the jets, uh, sorry, not, they're not really jets, the outflows um, like uh, at very low radii and they stay more sort of in the same direction throughout the simulation. Uh, and another possibility is that uh, that the, there's just less mixing at large scales uh, between the, low, the, the inflowing metal poor gas and the outflowing metal rich gas, uh, because the magnetic fields uh, well, well, prevent some of these uh, thermal instabilities to happen. Uh, it could also be that it's both of these things. Uh, I think it's hard to it's, it's hard to disentangle these uh, with with uh, cosmological simulation where everything happens at the same time, but. It's uh, definitely something that, that is interesting to study in the future. So I just wanted to conclude uh, saying that there's lots of different ways to add additional resolution to the regime that you're interested in. And it's a, a great computationally efficient way to do that. Um, it doesn't seem to, doing, doing this doesn't seem to super impact the central galaxy, uh, but it does increase the amount of cool gas in the halo a lot. Um, this, this is probably driven by um, density fluctuations and also makes it easier to match observations of this gas. Uh, the improved resolution also enhances uh, turbulence and non-thermal pressure support in the halo. Uh, and magnetic fields uh, also enhance pressure, uh, but also alter uh, the circumgalactic flows, they, they slow the inflows and they slow down the outflows. They uh, also smoothen the pressure and, and also temperature and density, and they decrease the level of metal mixing. That's it.
Okay. Thank you, Frege. It's time for questions. Mitai. Hello. Uh, that was a very interesting talk. Thank you very much. Um, so in the first part of your talk, um, you mentioned how the added resolution boosts up the uh, H1 uh, column densities, right? Um, have you already looked at uh, maybe with a similar lens for intermediate ions like silicon 2 or 3? Uh, silicon 2 should still be about 10 to the 4 Kelvin, right? Um, or am I mistaken? Uh, so if... So if it's so I so I haven't super so it's partially because I don't really um, I don't really know so, so it's not converged as you saw and I uh, don't want to predict all sorts of observables without uh, understanding what's going on sort of in the simulation so I'm sort of leaving this for future work but um, but I I think I'm seeing uh, based on you know not enough simulations is that there's uh, an increase of like gas 10 to the 4 Kelvin maybe two times 10 to the 4 as well but if you go to 10 like um, 4, 10 to the 4.5 to 10 to the 5.5, there's actually less gas because um, more of it cools down to lower temperatures. But I think times there's a, like, these types of simulations find it hard to, for example, get the oxygen six column uh, correctly, correct. And I think this is going to make it worse because we're already under predicting it. So um, I'm not certain this is a, uh, yeah, it's going to match all of these simulate. Oh, sorry, all the observations better. I I, I doubt it actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Phil, you are next. Yes, thank you. Um, thanks, Freka, for a great talk. Um, uh, I was wondering, um, for the metal mixing question, does the do these simulations in attempt to include any kind of sort of subgrid, subgrid scale eddy diffusion model, or is it just relying on numerical mixing? Uh, yes. Okay. It, well, mixing. Uh, I mean, obviously resolving well, mixing, but also. Whole, also, also hopefully physical mixing, but there yeah, will yeah. also be numerical No, I, I didn't mean to say, yeah, yeah. So resolved mixing no. and then numerical. I, I was just yes. wondering, since, I mean, you know well, for the fully Lagrangian or sort of no mass flux codes, the subgrid scale mixing makes a big difference. For AMR, you tend to overmix, and I just don't have a good intuition for how in between a repo is. Do you have an intuition for how big an effect that would be? Do you does does it not matter at all, or or? So I think so. So I've done so. These simulations I showed you were all with this extra resolution, but I've yeah. also done them with the normal mass resolution. So they're. Um, uh, so they would should have more numerical mixing because they are uh, substantially lower resolution in CGM. And what you then see is that these two curves are slightly closer together. So I think uh, going to higher resolution, uh, you know, increases the difference because it decreases some of this numerical uh, numerical mixing. Uh, so my feeling is that there are still so that it, that it's closer to grid codes, but that is you know I didn't actually like study this uh, <laughs> like for itself. It's just I see small differences still by go, by increasing the resolution. Thank you, Evan. Thanks. Yeah, Frika, that was a, a really interesting talk, and and obviously my. Um, Curiosity is also piqued by this magnetic field, uh, strong dependence on the magnetic fields. And so I'll preface this by saying maybe this is better left for the discussion, but I was wondering if you could comment briefly on, you know, the differences in the way the B fields are implemented in your simulation versus, say, the fire simulations where, where you see such a big discrepancy. Uh, but if you think briefly is out of the picture, then we could we could table it for the discussion. Yeah, I also don't think I know the implementation of, of fire well enough. So in that sense, I also don't um, I don't think I can really do your question justice. So maybe we should leave it. But uh, but it's definitely very different if you're doing it in a in a more like a Lagrangian code versus a, a grid code. So I uh, like I think just you know, purely based on uh, on the underlying numerics, like there will always be there will always be differences. But maybe Phil can chime in. 
Oh, I'm happy to talk about it in the discussion oh, yeah. section. I've been iterating a little with Rudiger, trying to understand the differences better, but we have not converged on an answer that we all agree on yet. So let's reconsider that in a, in a few minutes. Um, we have three more questions. Uh, Peng, and then uh, we're going to have Christine, and then uh, Juan. Peng. Uh, really cool stuff, Rika. So um, could you comment a little more about um, the survival, you know, the, the larger content of coal gas, uh, you know, when you have magnetic fields? Is it, are you protecting pre-existing coal gas, or is there a difference in the condensation of hot gas to coal gas? Uh, so most of my additional cool, so, so most of my additional cool gas that I have is, is here in the, in the center. Uh, so it's really this sort of puffy H1 dominated, uh, like disc that is, well, I don't know if you can call it, but it's rotating and it's very flared. I don't know, this structure. Uh, it's not so much, I mean, this is, this is, this is quite, this structure is quite transient and not always there and, and definitely looks different. Um, can I Let's see? I think I have some of the other. So I did this also with AGN feedback and with the TNG physics models. So you can see that this, um, so they have different, um, well, different different magnetic fields. It's, it's, and they have slightly stronger outflows because now they have AGN feedback. So you get, uh, you get a halo that's a little bit less magnetic field dominated, and also these like cool structures are uh, are less prominent, uh, but but they're still there. So I think the um, you know it's 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 not a, so because this stuff is quite under dense. It's not a lot of mass, and all of the mass is actually here in the center. So again, also for these two models, you can see that you get a lot more of that cold stuff here in the middle where it's like it's just a it's just not there when you don't have magnetic fields um so whether or not like these cold structures survive i have not looked at i uh, but they don't dominate the cool budget okay uh christine hi uh thanks um so I guess I understand the numerical reasons why you have an enhanced H1 covering fraction, but do you have a sense of like that increased um, H1 is coming from a particular astrophysical source in the simulation? Like, is it is it coming from all kinds of gas or is it gas associated with the outflows or the satellites or precipitation or is it just all of it? To some extent, it's all of it, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know, but we are in the process of, of, of quantifying, like, the different sort of, yeah, where does it come from and where does it go? Uh, Is there any difference in so, the angular momentum of the, of the cooler gas with increased... Um, I don't know. I don't think so. No, so the angular momentum didn't change very much, and I did the... the just the, the the radial velocity of the cool gas. So I think the, the 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 reasons why this cool gas is there, and I think you're right that it's like a, some of it is stripped from satellites, and some of it, I think actually quite a quite a lot of it is stripped from satellites, but some of it will be will come from the hot halo, and some of it may be pushed out. And I think all of these things are happening like regardless of your of your resolution. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, and that's why the overall sort of radial velocity distribution looks the same. So even though we have a lot more gas, cool gas, sorry, uh, uh, the velocity structure looks approximately the same when you isolate it. Okay, thanks. Okay, and final question before we start our discussion is uh, like one. one. Oh, hi. Hi, can you hear me? Okay. Um, thank you. This is really beautiful. Um, I... I think you mentioned that um, there's a wide range of beta in the CGM. And uh, even just from this plot, I think I see a correlation between beta and the temperature and density of the gas. So do you mostly just see low beta and the, the, the dense cold stuff in the CGM, basically? Uh, so there's a correlation, and that is mm. because so, so the the magnetic field is high where the um, 
where that when at some point, and that's also where these types are quite, you know, the that list is at least in these simulations are like approaching solar, whereas the in the in the it's it can be like orders of magnitude lower. So that this is the area. So if you're not actively currently uh, in a in a very strong outflow, very clearly heated by um, by feedback. Regime where where that gas can just because its metallicity is so high, so you get a correlation between the magnetic field and the metallicity because they're both related to outflows, uh, and because the metallicity then connects to whether or not it can cool. A we missed. We I'm missed sorry. Uh, where did it go? the last part of your. Uh explanation the metallicity and that oh. also where the gas cools i think that's what you're saying yeah oh i think we lost her again <laughs> because that's uh, uh the high metallicity gas can cool uh at the high density sorry the higher density higher metallicity gas can cool and then it correlates with the temperature it's not a direct well i don't think it's a direct correlation between the the the, the temperature okay thank you okay thank you Frederick. thank you all the speakers Bye.